9. Aralcombe Desert Ship Graveyard The Aral Sea was once the world's fourth largest inland sea and was home to a thriving fishing industry. During the 1960s, the Soviet Union diverted the rivers feeding the Aral Sea to supply water for cotton and rice fields, causing the sea to dry up, leaving behind a poisonous, salty wasteland now known as the Aralcombe Desert. Straddling the border of modern-day Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, the Aralcom Desert is littered with rusting fishing boats that were abandoned when the Aral Sea shrunk, and its salt content reached toxic levels, killing all of its marine life. What little is left of the Aral Sea is now just a tenth of its former size, and its fishing industry is a distant memory marked by the decaying trawlers. Much of the ghost fleet lies at the edge of what was once the bustling harbour city of Moynak. The abandoned ships throughout the desert are accompanied by derelict buildings that were part of Moynak and other busy seaside towns years ago. Along with the shrinking of the sea, the surrounding populations have also drastically reduced, and current residents are plagued by health problems from the toxic dust that gets blown around by the wind. There's been a growing effort in recent years to revive the Aral Sea, which is once again being fed by the rivers that were cut off from it. Its salinity has decreased and fish have returned. But there's no knowing whether the sea will be restored to its former glory and submerge the depressing sight of rotting ships. 8. Vogelsang Located deep in the forest of northeastern Germany, the village of Vogelsang has remained hidden from the public eye for the entirety of its existence. It was founded during the 18th century by settlers who felled timber for a living, and in 1882 it became part of a state forest. The Soviet military was drawn to Vogelsang's remoteness leading to the establishment of a nearby base and housing complex in 1951. Just a year later, there were 15,000 people living there, mostly military members and their families. It was the third largest Soviet base in East Germany, consisting of around 550 buildings, including shops, offices, a gym, a school, a theater, and medical facilities. The Soviets managed to keep Vogelsang a complete secret from German civilians, and even moved nuclear weapons into the settlement right under the population's nose. They carried out their training exercises at night to avoid being detected. It's unclear how long the Soviets kept nuclear weapons at Vogelsang. Official records state that they were removed in 1959, but American and British military intelligence found that the missiles might have remained there until after the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Russian military abandoned the site in 1994, leaving behind communist-era relics, including an obelisk featuring a carving of Vladimir Lenin and artwork depicting soldiers, military equipment, workers, and farmers. They also left evidence of the seemingly normal residential life the population enjoyed, including liquor bottles and other everyday items, sports equipment, and murals featuring nature scenes, dancers in traditional Russian dress, and cartoon characters. All the buildings at Vogelsang have been demolished, but a few photographers managed to capture pictures and footage of the ruins before they were destroyed. 7. The Bay of Abandoned Hotels There's a collection of five derelict, overgrown hotels along the Adriatic shoreline, near the Croatian seaside town of Kupari, that have all clearly seen better days. Built during the 1960s, when the region was part of Yugoslavia, they're now known as the Bay of Abandoned Hotels. Altogether, the upscale hotels could accommodate up to 1,600 people, and there was a nearby campground with room for up to 4,000 people, along with numerous private villas. The resort was built largely with military funding, and as it became more popular, it got increasingly difficult for ordinary middle-class people to book a room. As a result, the hotels and their surrounding accommodations became known as a place exclusively for the military elite. After Croatia declared its independence from Yugoslavia in 1991, a war ensued, and Croatian soldiers took up residence at the hotels. Over a several-week period, the Yugoslavs destroyed the very resort that they had created, looting and burning the hotels in an effort to oust the Croatians. The war ended in 1995 with a Croatian victory, but the region is still littered with signs of the devastating violence today. Once, bustling properties have been left to decay, but the area has seen an increased number of visitors in recent years, and the deteriorating hotels are catching the attention of investors, indicating that perhaps the property will be revived sometime in the near future. 6. Calico Located in San Bernardino County in Southern California, Calico was founded as a silver mining town in 1881 in the Calico Mountains of the Mojave Desert. 
In the mid-1880s, it became the epicenter of California's silver industry. It all started when a group of prospectors discovered silver in the area, which was quickly followed by the construction of a post office, three hotels, five general stores, and numerous bars and brothels. The county also established a school district, along with several boarding houses, restaurants, and other businesses. Town officials were also appointed, including two constables, a justice of the peace, five commissioners, and two doctors. By 1885, Calico's population had grown to around 1,200 residents, and there were at least 500 nearby mines. There were also telephone and telegraph services, including a Wells Fargo offices, which was often seen as a symbol of the so-called American dream. Calico's population peaked at around 3,500 residents in 1890, with Chinese, English, Irish, Greek, French, and Dutch nationals all living within the town, along with Americans. But the town's glory days came to an abrupt end in 1896, when the value of silver diminished rapidly, causing local mines to shut down en masse. The post office closed the following year, and by the turn of the century, Calico was a ghost town, and it remains one to this day. It's a sad but not uncommon story in the American chapter of westward expansion, and any attempts to revive the town as anything other than a tourist attraction have, predictably, failed. Have you ever been to an abandoned ghost town? Tell us about your experience in the comments below, and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. Chaitén In 2008, the Chaitén volcano in Chilean Patagonia erupted violently after sitting dormant for over 9,000 years, hurling ash to an altitude of more than 10 miles. It was the first rhyolitic eruption to be observed in modern times. Rhyolitic eruptions are highly explosive, causing magma to spew catastrophically toward the sky and all over the surrounding environs. Volcanic ash rained down on the town of Chaiten six miles away, while mud flows caused the banks of the nearby Blanco River to burst, turning one of the town's streets into a new channel. Around 5,000 residents were evacuated as buildings were buried in up to five feet of sediment. In the meantime, the nearby airport and marine facilities sustained extensive damage. Today, Shaidem remains deserted and uninhabitable, and its former residents are hesitant to return anyway because they're worried that history might repeat itself. They reported that earthquakes had gotten stronger and more frequent in the days leading up to the eruption, but authorities had failed to realize that the tremors were a sign of impending volcanic doom, leaving them at the mercy of Mother Nature. Even the Chilean Geological Survey, Cerna Geomin, considered the volcano a non-threat and weren't monitoring it prior to the eruption and the settlers who founded Chaiten in 1940 were also unaware of the nearby danger. In response to the eruption, the Chilean government relocated the former residents of Chaiten and began working closely with scientists to develop a nationwide plan for addressing volcanic hazards. But the village itself remains partially buried and frozen in time. 4. Wunsdorf Nicknamed Little Moscow and the Forbidden City, Wunsdorf is a 60,000-acre former East German military camp that once served as the Red Army's German headquarters, housing 75,000 German men, women, and children, including 40,000 soldiers. Life there was strict. Soldiers weren't allowed to take vacations or have their loved ones visit, according to tour guide Werner Borschert, who spoke with CNN. But there were some perks, including privacy. Situated deep in the forest, roughly 25 miles south of Berlin, Wunsdorf functioned as a hidden community, with schools, shops, a concert hall, and even a pool, theater, and other luxurious accommodations that were reserved for more high-ranking military members and their families. The last remaining Russian soldiers fled the complex in 1994, a few years after the Iron Curtain fell. They received just 12 hours' notice and left in a hurry, with some even abandoning their half-eaten lunches and leaving their pets behind. Some of the buildings remain seemingly untouched, under the care of a lone groundsman who works hard to keep them in good condition, although the elements have taken an undeniable toll. Two statues of Vladimir Lenin sit outside, and the structures remain filled with Cold War-era artwork. Other buildings have been repurposed, including the former soldiers' barracks, which were converted into residential apartments. Wunsdorf is one of the few out of the many abandoned former Soviet sites throughout Germany that's open to the public giving visitors an opportunity to peer back to a time that feels like it happened much longer ago than it actually did. 3. Alima Island 
From 1912 to 1943, Italy's fascist regime, known as the Kingdom of Italy, occupied the Greek Dodecanese Islands. Its navy, the Regia Marina, used Alamo Island as a military outpost and a submarine base. During World War II, the Nazis began to question Italy's loyalty as an Axis power. To be safe, the Germans decided that they wanted Alamo and its surrounding islands to themselves. In what became known as the Battle of Leros, German forces took thousands of Italians as prisoners, executing many of them on the spot. The Nazis were quick to make themselves at home in the Dodecanese Islands, including at the base on Alamo. The following year, seven British commandos attacked the harbor in an attempt to destroy German submarines there. They were quickly captured, and six of the seven British men were executed. Meanwhile, many citizens were deported from Alamo for trying to help the commandos. The last remaining family on Alamo eventually left to seek better opportunities, and nobody's lived there since the 60s. In 1987, the deserted village was declared a protected settlement. The military buildings still stand, and some are riddled with bullet holes, serving as an eerie reminder of a dark chapter in recent world history. Other structures lie in ruins, with old furniture scattered throughout. World War II relics are strewn across the island. Graffiti left behind by German soldiers shows men drinking beer and receiving letters, landscapes from their homeland, and other scenes that might remind a man of his life before the war. 2. Varosha Decades ago, during a time that's long since passed, the rich and famous flocked to a resort town on the island of Cyprus known as Varosha. Located within the city of Famagusta, it was one of the world's most popular tourist destinations during the early 1970s, attracting the likes of Elizabeth Taylor and Brigitte Bardot. Turkish forces invaded Cyprus and took control of Famagusta in 1974, causing Varosha's 39,000 inhabitants to flee. They left with plans to eventually return, but unfortunately, that never happened. Ever since, the site has remained abandoned and fenced off. The city is off limits to the public, and nature's reclaimed most of it. Only Turkish military and United Nations UN personnel are allowed there. Urban explorers have occasionally snuck in and snapped photos of Varosha's crumbling buildings, rusting cars, shops with clothing on the racks, and tables still set for the next meal, which serve as an eerie time capsule depicting the rush state in which people left. As of 2020, authorities in northern Cyprus were reportedly entertaining the idea of reopening Varosha but nothing has happened yet. 1. Bechevinka During the 1960s, a top-secret submarine base and military town called Bechevinka was established on Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula in the country's Far East. The residential section consisted of eight three- to five-story apartment buildings, a kindergarten and school, a hostel, post office, grocery store, and a club for entertainment. All the necessary installations, including barracks, storage facilities, a commandant's office, a headquarters building, boiler room, diesel substation, and a fuel warehouse could be found on the military portion of the property. A supply ship stopped at Bechevinka once a week to drop off food, mail, and necessities. It was the remote settlement's main connection to the outside world, as there was no land route between Bechevinka and other cities, and the only way to reach it was by boat or helicopter. The base closed down in 1996, five years after the Soviet Union's collapse, as a cost-saving measure. Residents simply packed up and moved elsewhere, leaving behind a ghost town that looks pretty much the same now as how it was left, minus the effects of time and the elements. Because it's remote and difficult to access, the ruins have been largely spared from vandalism. What's left there today consists of rusting ships and derelict buildings filled with personal belongings and other items, including toys, newspapers, equipment manuals, textbooks, children's drawings, and furniture. Thanks for watching. Which of these abandoned towns would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.